So to begin with, we uh, just need to choose a reference mesh that we're going to base the surface from, uh, which in our case is going to be our topography, but it could be any set of mesh that we have within our project that we want to just offset by a certain distance. Uh, sometimes you could want to set that a constant offset, which would be in here. So all the way across the site with a constant offset. But if we've got some drilling data, then we might want to use that to set up the, the offset distance. And that will allow us to have a variable thickness where we do have data points of this offset surface. Yeah, definitely. So if we come into this base topology contact, so the same way we would normally set them the surfaces up, uh, I'm just going to set my primary topology, be my topsoil, and then uh, use contacts below, because in, in this case, topsoil is our top unit. And then click OK, and this will set up that distance in here. Um, sometimes you might need to, to change this around depending on how you're setting up your, your model. So click OK. And this will then create a new surface within our, our surface chronology, which we can, uh, we've got some additional options around if we, if we right click and open, yep. bring up the, the dialogue. So if we come into the surface setting options, we've got some one in here. And the one that I recommended was the unidirectional limits. Uh, because we wanted to have a set thickness across our site um, and we want to have a minimum distance. So I think they said that they wanted, a, in their case, a topsoil of like 0.5 across our site. I think our minimum topsoil in this project is 0.4. So I'm just going to use this minimum distance here, uh, 0.2, 0.4, sorry. And then because it's the topo, uh, we have to set the direction as backwards, but sometimes meshes the other way around, aren't they? So yeah, it uh, depends on which one it is. But typically for the topography, the uh, upwards will be, or sorry, forwards will be uh, above the topography and the backwards be, be below the topography. Yeah, definitely. Um, cool. And then we just click OK and this will update our surface. Fantastic. So now we've got that offset from our topography. So if I bring in both of those meshes, so our topo and our topsoil offset, we can put a slicer for it and have a look at it. Brilliant. Now I've got a uniform, or at least a minimum thickness of 0.4, and then it might get thicker where we've got uh, borehole data showing that it's thicker than that. Do you have any other approaches that you sometimes do? Uh, so the offset surface is, is definitely probably the most common and, and best approach. Uh, you, you might have a situation where you don't have in this case, the topsoil across the whole of the site. And so if you use this method, it does do it across the whole site. In that case, one of the other options for the offset surface in your settings there was bidirectional, which does mean uh, the surface can be projected to a maximum above or below your reference surface, in this case, the topography. So um, using that, uh, some some set limits, and also you can all uh, other information. So, you know, if you've got a defined GIS line for where the topsoil um, kind of ends is, is no longer in the area. You can use all of that to, uh, still achieve the same result of a lot more reasonable offset surface, but you, it means you don't have to have it across the entire site area if that's, uh, the situation you have.